What is up, YouTube.com? It's your boy, John McGarrett's back with another video. And in this video, I want to talk about how to get a good job. I know I've made another video about this before, but I just I've thought about it longer and I have uh, really just tried to condense it down into a more neat package for you so you can get it, you know, listen to the whole thing in about like hopefully less than 10 minutes. So, with that being said, I uh, hope you enjoy, and if you do get some value out of this, if you want daily content of coaching and self-help from somebody who's had factory experience, other uh, experience in like low, low skill jobs uh, over a decade, and I know a lot about it, uh, please hit, think about hitting that subscribe button and hopefully, or for sure, leave me some feedback down below. That'd be, really mean a lot to me. Um, daily content. Thank you. Let's just jump right into it. So how to get a good job. Like I said, I made this in another video, but I thought about it more, so I wanted to feed it into the algorithm again in a more tight, condensed package. And the first thing I think we need to talk about is a good job. It's different for everyone. Sometimes it's pay, a lot of it is perks. For most people, I've noticed a lot of people care a lot more about perks than they do pay. Vacation, sick days, etc., And then just like ease, good culture, things like that. I don't think most people are a term I call killers and killers are people essentially who want to work 16 hour days. They want to put in 12s. They want to work seven days a week. All they want to do is work and they want to produce and they want to do better and they want to do better and better and better forever. So for instance, I would say I'm one of those killers because I do a lot of work. Like right now I run five channels, though they may not be performing very well. I'm still in the newbie learning phase. So I'm just, I committed to making five pieces of meaningful content a day and trying to make them better. Uh, it's a whole iterative process. Don't really want to jump into it, but, um, it's a non-negotiable for me. I, I, I do like at least, I don't know. I don't think I've been doing this. I've made 179 pieces of content in the last 42 days. Uh, most of them over 10 minutes long, uh, whatever, you know what I mean? I'm just saying I'm different than a lot of different people. So like what I want and what you want are going to be completely different things. So then that brings me to step one, just reflect and know what you want. And if you do that, you'll stop yourself from getting the wrong job, saving yourself a lot of time and heartbreak, and then increasing the likelihood that you're going to get a good job. Okay. So that's step one. And after that, you have three main routes I've identified and you have the college route, the trades route, and the experience route. College route is pretty self-explanatory. This trades route would be like journeyman apprenticeship, stuff like that, getting into the trades, like, um, plumbing, electricians, uh, construction, operators union, stuff like that. But I'm going to talk about the experience route and the experience route is for people who pretty much have to low skilled labor, uh, or high school dropouts, etc., high school diploma, uh, type people. So that is me. So that I have a lot of experience in it over a decade. So this is the, the, the tactics I want to talk about and I condensed it down. I talked, I had another video about it did okay, but this one's going to be the uh, condensed version. I fell into bucket three, so that's what I'm gonna coach on. So the first step is in this bucket, start where you're at. Just get a job on whatever skill you have that enter that job within the intention, change your intention of getting this job, not to just get a job for a certain amount of pay to do a certain thing. You're gonna enter that job with the intention of moving up and jumping at whatever opportunity becomes available to you. So I don't know your labor market, but right now most factories, retail stores in my area seem to have a huge employee churn, which means most people are leaving at three months. Churn is leaving a company. Employee churn is hiring and then they leave. Hiring and then they leave churn, like churning. Most people, I mean, the last factory I worked at is a 75% churn at three months and about 90% by one year. So massive churn, which means the company sucks. Correct. That's bad. But that means there's a lot of opportunities. Where there's a lot of problems, there lies a lot of opportunities. And a lot of the opportunity at that factory was positions and gaining experience, okay? being able to technically put your name down for another notch of experience on your resume and then hanging on to that place for a year to at least have a good reference is going to be a very, very valuable strategy. And if you go into companies with this strategy, with the attention of moving, you won't find yourself getting caught up in a trap, like working, you know, you're let, you know, you're blinking, you've been at a place for five years and then you're complaining because they don't treat you right. Well, most companies ain't going to treat you right. So you should have been, you know what I mean? Like waiting for them to like, I don't know. Uh, if you got a cheating girlfriend and she keeps cheating on you and you're waiting for her to stop cheating, uh, you can't really, you can't expect them to change. You know what I mean? You have to do something. Uh, so for example, for this strategy, let's say we have a completely new person, like just out of high school, first out of high school, first job. Um, they may enter Walmart in the back or with the intention of getting, uh, any de department manager job as soon as possible, and then maybe growing into an assistant manager position so that when they go out and apply to other places, 
they go into another business that may have another opportunity to climb positions, okay? Now, I know this sounds like climbing a ladder. Most people say to climb the ladder, work at one company, but I'm, I'm telling you, leave company, leave. But that's what we're talking about. That's why we're, why are we leaving the jobs? Because we want to abuse a psychological concept called the honeymoon phase. And let me explain. Everything has a honeymoon phase, whether it be relationships, new hobbies, new projects, you can all relate. Everything has a honeymoon phase, but definitely new jobs have a honeymoon phase. You always feel good. New opportunities, new things, new people, new job, new whatever, you know, everything's new. So it's great. But the thing is, jobs do have uh, that honeymoon phase for you too. And I don't think a lot of people really pay attention to that. Management teams also have that honeymoon phase for you. And um, every career boost I've ever gotten in a company has always happened in the first year. Every single one. I've, uh, I've, I've, I've probably in the last 10 years, I've had like six different positions and I've always excelled in the first year and then growth, diminishing returns, you know, stagnation, <clears throat> less opportunity. Um, so that's it. Get a job with the intention of scale building and moving up positions to gain experience and hopping to a new job about after a year or whenever you feel no, no more growth uh, at that level or use it as a leverage to score a higher position at the new job you're trying to uh, apply for. Then rinse repeating because if you have a good first impression, you should be able to use that as an opportunity during the honeymoon phase of your relationship with your company to maybe get a better position. Uh, yeah, and then rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat until like you find a better strategy. I would just say, just maybe try this right now. Look for a new job. If you're stuck at a job, you've been there for three, four years, five years, and you're not seeing any prospects, you know, you've applied for many management positions, you've applied for this and that, and they're kind of shutting you down every everywhere. Go somewhere else. Don't wait for them. They, they, they've made it very clear. They don't care about you. They want you in that box. They think that's why that's as big as you'll get. If a company cares about you, They'll facilitate your growth. They'll they'll pat you on the back. They'll reinforce positive behavior. And if they don't care about you, you ain't going to hear nothing from them. So if that's the case, leave. But I also want to say, don't just do this to every company. If you smell that the company is good for you, then I would say to not screw them over by just leaving, but try to grow in them. But I'm speaking from my own personal experience that all companies at the end of the day do not support or facilitate everyone unless you're in their little club. So with that being said, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, hope you enjoyed this little talk, give you a couple things to think about. And again, I would, I would, I'm trying to grow this channel, trying to like grow, trying to reach more people. Leave me some comments and feedback, maybe things I can work on, things you liked maybe, or things you didn't like. And then, um, so I can do things that people like, or not necessarily like, but are good for people, but then stop doing the things that are bad for people. Uh, I, I'd really like to uh, make this a thing. So anyway, that being said, I'll catch you guys later in the next video. Thank you for watching.